Happy Wednesday morning. Are you ready to talk about something that's so fun and exciting to think about? Well, that's what we got for you today in the book of 1 Thessalonians. We're in the fourth chapter, and we're going to begin reading with um, uh, verse 15. So that's where we left off last time. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 15. Let's just get right into it. Reading from the Amplified Bible. Here we go. It says, For this we declare to you by the Lord's own word, that we who are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall in no way proceed into his presence or have any advantage at all over those who have previously fallen asleep in him in death. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with the loud cry of summons and with the shout of an archangel and with the blast of the trumpet of God and those who have departed this life in Christ will rise first. Then we, the living ones who remain on the earth, shall simultaneously be caught up along with the resurrected dead in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so always through the eternity of eternities shall we be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort and encourage one another with these words. So here, <clears throat> the Apostle Paul has described what we commonly refer to as the rapture. Um, it's the great, that word, means to be caught up or snatched up. <laughs> now, I love that word. Have you ever seen like um, when they show you a behind the scenes um, way in which they will create a, uh, a fight scene or a battle scene or something in Hollywood movies? And when if somebody gets hit or, or, you know, blown up or something, you know, they could be uh, actually have wires attached to them that you don't see in the movie. And when the bomb goes off or when they get hit hard or whatever, something jerks them away from, from that to show the force of the blow. I, I kind of have that middle image here. The rapture is like, like the Lord reaching down from heaven and jerking us away, snatching us up from off the earth. Wow, what a day. Um, what, is, what does it say? You know, uh, Well, let's, let's just kind of get into it verse by verse here. So I'm kind of getting, I'm excited getting ahead of myself. So remember, the Thessalonians, they were a little confused. They needed some instruction about this. They obviously were concerned about those who had died, the believers that had died. <coughs> Excuse me. So this was a, a, a big reason why the Apostle Paul is going through with them. And so verse 15 is another thing of don't worry about those who have gone on, who have died from this uh, this life. Uh, you know, Paul says, listen, we declared you by the word of the Lord himself. Paul got this straight from the Lord himself. And what was that message? That, hey, if you're alive on this earth, when Jesus comes back, you're not going to... Um, uh, be you know preeminent or whatever the dead in Christ shall rise first he says we who are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord shall in no way proceed into his presence or have any advantage at all over those who have previously fallen asleep in him just because somebody has died that does not represent any kind of difficulty any kind of disadvantage for, for those people who have died in the Lord. And in fact, in a sense, they kind of get in the front of the line. They're going to go first. So I heard a preacher, I don't know who it was, I don't remember, but he kind of told a joke. He was standing at the, his mother's grave, and he said, this is where I want to be when the rapture occurs, just to see the dirt fly. So that was kind of a joke, but it was a joke based on the truth of Scripture. And that is, 
that the dead in Christ shall rise first. Now, I don't know how this is all going to happen, and I think I've mentioned before, it doesn't matter whether you're in a coffin, whether you were cremated, whether you were buried at sea, whether uh, you know somebody died tragically in some uh, terrible event, was incinerated, uh, you know, vaporized, whatever. It doesn't, none of those things matter. The, the, the essence of their physical body that has passed away will be reunited with their spirit and instantaneously changed into their permanent, eternal, glorified body. Right along with those that are on the earth. You know, it's, it's interesting how Paul wrote this kind of a, a, with a sense of an expectation that he, when he said, we which are alive and remain, that he was going to be alive at the coming of the Lord. We say, oh man, how wrong he was. How terrible. No, it's not terrible. It's not a terrible thing to live every day with the expectation that today might be the day. How about that? Do you do that? Have you ever got up in the morning and thought, you know what? Today might be the day. Wow. Think about it. Living in the everyday expectation of the coming, the, the rapture of the saints, the coming of Jesus Christ with that great day. Well, let's go on. He says, verse 16, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a loud cry of summons, the shout of the, with the shout of the archangel and with the blast of the trumpet of God, and those who have departed this life in Christ will rise first. First. So once again, kind of like the uh, first in line. The dead are okay. You don't have to worry about them. In fact, they're going to go before you do. Now, this is all going to happen so fast. <laughs> you know, it's going to be, uh, you know, I would say impossible to even, you know, put things in, in sequence. You know, we're sitting around... The dead in Christ have risen, and now we're sitting around twiddling our thumbs, waiting for our turn. Uh, I just don't see it happening that way, because God is the God of, of everything, and he's the God of time, he's the God of events, and, it, and it's all just going to happen, happen. And so, the Lord descending himself, he himself is coming back for his people. Now, let's remember, this is not the actual, literal, second coming, quote-unquote, of Christ, where he actually comes and sets foot on the earth and sets up his thousand-year reign, the millennial reign of Christ on this earth. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about the rapture of the saints, where he comes down in the atmosphere above the earth and snatches up his people, okay? Verse 17 then we, the living ones who remain on the earth, shall simultaneously be caught up along with the resurrected dead in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so always, through the eternity of eternities, shall we be with the Lord. We're never going to be separated again. From whom? From each other. Because all of us are with the Lord. And with the Lord. We'll never be separated again. There's something that's going to be different. I've talked about this sometimes in different ways. I kind of like to think of it sometimes as we're going to live at that point at the speed of light. You know, when you, when you go to the speed of light, time stops. Interesting. Scientifically, if you reach the speed of light, time basically stops. And we're going to live at the speed of light. What is that going to mean? I don't know, man, but somehow it's going to mean that we are going to know absolutely that the Lord's presence is with us continually. But what about, you know, on this, we're living with Christ during the millennium on the thousand years. Yeah, I know in a thousand years is one year after the other after the other. Yeah, so in one sense, you live in this, in this uh, speed of light situation. In the other sense, you're still ticking off time for the people that are still living on the earth. How's that all in going to play? Who, who knows? Who knows? But we are going to be with the Lord forever. Once the rapture hits. And never be separated again. Never be separated from the Lord. 
and never be separated from our loved ones who are, the, our, who are believers in Jesus Christ. And then he ends the whole thing in verse 18 by saying, listen, therefore, comfort and encourage one another with these words. Can I say more? This idea, this, this, this word picture that Paul put out there, this truth of future events should comfort us and encourage us. Just knowing that one day Jesus is going to come back for his saints should give us great comfort and encouragement that we can go through this life regardless of the challenges, uh, the, the circumstances that we face day to day. It just doesn't matter anymore. Are we still going to feel as we struggle through life from time to time? Feel the struggle? Absolutely. But guess what? Take comfort. Take great courage. Because one day you are going to see your Lord face to face with all of your loved ones that have gone before you and all of God's family everywhere. And we will enjoy an eternity in his presence. God bless you. We'll see you next time.